Hello, welcome to the Mill Podcast, brought to you by Mill & Co. I'm Rachel Bellatori, founder and CEO, and I'm joined today by a very, very dear friend of mine, Tyler Brown. He is the co-founder of 8Well and Dripped. Hi, Rachel, Ty. Rachel, thank you for having me. So excited to be here. So excited to have you. I want to go on record by saying that Tyler sent me one of the shortest <laughs> bios in the history of the Mill Podcast from one of the most impressive people that I know. So I'm going to read this off for you, but I'm also going to add in some color commentary here. So like I mentioned, Tyler is co-founder of 8Well and Dripped. As a health and wellness enthusiast, he's focused on building businesses that help individuals improve overall well-being, not just physical fitness. I met Tyler at Johns Hopkins University, where he was a captain of the football team, uh, an overall incredible human being, and a wonderful father and husband to two awesome kids and a hell of a wife. How was that for your bio, Ty? So that was amazing. I think what I'll do is take that over. Just give me the right, the script that you have, and I'll I'll, I'll start okay. putting that on the websites and everything that I that yeah. asked me for a bio. I'll and send you a bill so, for that. So I mean, you do all of our other branding as anyway. So why not some personal brand? Um, it is fun. Eight Well and and Dripped have been clients of ours yes. for developing their branding at the launch of both their businesses. So Tyler, before I get into it. Why don't you give our viewers a rundown of what is 8Well and what is Dripped? 8Well right, is our kind of our foundational company, um, kind of the, the the baby of our, our wellness businesses. So 8Well is a, a small group strength training studio, but also a wellness company. Um, we had conversations, Rachel, when we were building the brand. What our, our goal with 8Well was to really build a brand that was trying to raise awareness about overall holistic health and the eight dimensions of, or what we have determined to be the eight dimensions of wellness. So, um, and what we've seen is in our personal training sessions that people are suffering from things that are outside of just their physical strength and what you can improve in just a, a strength training session. So we have people talking about their finances, their, their social aspects, their occupational aspects. So what we wanted to be able to do is build um, an institution essentially or, or, or business that yes, uses our strengths built around personal training to build a really good small group training session that gets people strong, but also raises awareness about how they can build their overall selves. Um, and then kind of integrated into that business is, um, is Dripped, which is an IV hydration business, because a lot of what we talk about is just building healthy habits. And what Dripped is going to be able to do is just help people to kind of take advantage of optimizing their hydration uh, in some regular cadence. So it integrates well with our with our fitness studio. So when people have hard workouts or they're planning to do some things, um, they can kind of have access to IV hydration and IV therapy, vitamin injections as well. But it's really just kind of getting that thought of how can I be more proactive about my hydration and taking care of the, the my nutrient absorption. Yeah, nutrient absorption. Can you say that yes. 10 times last for me? No, that's the um, only time. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about 8Well, Ty, is that the you know, when I think about my own experience as a former division one lacrosse player, right? Like highly motivated person, love fitness, but then there's days where my mental health isn't where I want it to be, or I'm thinking about my finances, or I'm thinking about my nutrition. And then if any of those things are feeling low, the first thing that I cut out is a workout mm -hmm. immediately, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, well, I don't have time. I don't have bandwidth. I don't have energy. I don't have insert word here. So what's so great about what you're doing is you're really showing people that health and wellness is holistic and comprehensive. It's not just about physical health and strength. Yes. And that's kind of been so deep into to our roots of 8Well. Um, that's been the impetus there is trying to get people to just think about improving their overall wellness um, or improving their overall well-being and creating this wellness plan. Uh, and I think that that's kind of been the, the biggest kind of conversation that we have with people. So as soon as you walk into kind of an 8Well workout, you're going to have a coach there a trainer, someone's going to check in with you, right? And they're going to ask you, yeah, you're going to check into the studio, check into your class. So you might feel like any other group class you go to, but someone's actually going to say like, Hey, how are you doing today? Uh, how'd you mm -hmm. sleep? What'd you eat? And that's been kind of like something that we try to ingrain into our culture here is that it's not just about how much you're going to sweat and how many calories you're going to burn here. It's going to be kind of about how are you feeling overall? Because if you, if you do have these, these stresses that are on your body from you not being able to sleep because your career outlooks aren't as strong as you wanted, or you have some financial issues, you're probably not sleeping well. And I shouldn't have you go deadlift 200 pounds today. So it's really, how, how can I check in the way you're feeling kind of overall? And then we can mm -hmm. kind of base your workout today, kind of according to, to your, your overall health for that day. 
I love that so much. I, I think it's it's applicable to literally everyone, regardless of your experience level with fitness. You know, whether you're just starting out or you've been playing at a very competitive collegiate level for a long time and trying to find yourself again. You know, I think yeah, that's definitely it's just so amazing. And then you know, you've got a you've got a financial consulting background, very successful one. How do you find that you maybe integrate some things that you did in your previous role into your role as co CEO and co founder of yeah. Eat Well and Drift? <clears throat> It's um, it almost seems like the crossover wouldn't be that clear between mm. financial consulting and just to kind of give a little background on what I did on that end was really work with company executives to look at what a lot of their spend was going towards. Our concentration was in their healthcare spend, so looking at how how the company is spending its dollars and how do we more efficiently spend those company dollars to give the right the, the best bang for the buck, best bang for buck at least from a uh, a healthcare standpoint. Um, so that got me very interested in just how companies spend their money, um, what what metrics you should be looking at in order to have that that company in a in a successful place. So just building a well, we built our business in a place to be more to be profitable and to have good financial standing, kind of from the beginning. And I think that that's where a lot of trainers and people that have just wellness passions they they lose out in this business space because that's not where their background lies. It's just in the passion in wanting to do yoga, wanting to do fitness, fitness, right? Want to do, even if it's stress from sauce therapy, they still don't have those, uh, that financial backing. And we were, I was, I had kind of the interest enough to kind of say when we were building the business, this is what, this is what metrics we should be looking at. So when we were thinking about financing our equipment, thinking about financing our construction build out, um, how we should develop our membership pricing um, our current KPIs, right? We these are metrics that we look at regularly to ensure that our business is a good place, and it's something that we we look at to ensure also what our future growth should be at. Um, this is something that we we continuously ensure that we're optimizing in order to to ensure the business is a good profitable place. That should be in your bio, for the record. <laughs> yeah, I okay. mean, <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're still off. we're still reworking it, right? So we're going to keep yeah, adding things right. here. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna add that in there. No, but I think you're so right, Ties. And I talk to a lot of um, entrepreneurs about this because they are so focused on their product or service, right? Mm -hmm. They're doing R and D. They're perfecting it. They're testing. They're trying to get proof of concept. And what they're not thinking about is, what if it doesn't sell, and I still want to do this? Or what if it sells like crazy, and I get this influx of cash? How do I? Yeah beat up my team to maintain that level of performance. And so because you start there and you have a good product and service, you're, you are thinking holistically about your business. So I think that's a perfect way to use your background as a financial consultant into ensuring sustainability and future success of your business. Yeah. And, and I think kind of coming into it, there's kind of some numbers that even showed that, right? Um, a third of businesses fail kind of within the first two years. And a lot of that's because they're not, they don't have proper business planning. So, um, how do you grow? What are your kind of, what are your, what are your cash flow? What's your cash flow? Uh, what are your KPIs again? And for us, a lot of that was kind of looking at our churn, looking at um, what our retention rates are, what's our recurring revenue. And it's not the, it's not like the um, thing you want to be talking about right out loud. Cause it always feels like you're kind of mixing your, your business with, um, kind of what your members need and the value there, but you can't provide the value for people. And like, I, I can think about that from a fitness standpoint, you can't provide the value if we can't stay in business. So you have to have something that's profitable. So we're always, I always kind of from day one, wanted to build something that was profitable, almost with the idea of, hey, if you want to sell this thing, someone would actually want to buy it because that's going to kind of lead us into the best place in order to continue growing. You're, you're beginning with the end in mind, the potential yeah. end. You will, you will <laughs> sell, but if you were to, right? Like, you're already setting yourself up for future success. And I, I, I talked to someone about that recently and, and she was asking me, did you ever think about selling your business? And I was like, wow, no, the thought really never occurred to me. And it definitely isn't for our viewers watching and curious yeah. to sell. So I'm not and going to. well either, we're not looking to sell as well. <laughs> we are not selling, yeah. period. But yeah, I think it's critical to think about that because just, just the exercise of going through that helps me set myself up for greater success today. Mm -hmm. Right. I think hypothetically, if this were to happen for me, what are the things I would need to do? How do I even get it? Because to even get it to a point of sale, you have to be successful. Exactly. Right? So for me, yeah. if, I were to think through, if I were to get this to a point that it would be desirable by someone else, what do I have to do? Yeah. And that's kind of the, the basis of how we want to build it. Yeah, I love it. And so now that you've been doing this 
for a while now. When did you when did you guys launch? Was that 2021? It's like what year are we in now? Um so we're coming up on two years yeah, in two the years. end of twenty twenty four. So um yeah. or the sorry, the, the beginning of twenty twenty four. Yeah, two years. Amazing. So you've had experiences, highs and lows, I'm sure. <laughs> what are some challenges and also opportunities that have arisen running a fitness and wellness company in this current market? Yeah. Um Fitness and wellness is obviously a, a very impactful place. Um, I think the the biggest challenge that you that you face here is is that the market is and can feel kind of saturated, and that's because and and this is almost with a a positive kind of at, at the back end of it, and it's the fact that people are more interested in fitness and wellness than they kind of have ever been. And that's from a consumer standpoint, people just trying to be healthy. And that's also from a, a practitioner standpoint. So more people want to be trainers and more people want to be, um, want to be yoga instructors. Right. And because you, you've seen that there is this, this opportunity to be able to be in the space. And the positive of that is that hopefully that leads to more people being healthy and more people exercising and more people and more talent being in the industry. But, um, it could definitely lead to the industry just being oversaturated. Um, and, the challenge there is that what you need to think about is what is your kind of your value proposition. You have to ensure that the value that you're delivering is greater than this oversaturation point or this, this average that you're seeing in the industry. And then you could separate yourself, but you have to be able to provide true value uh, and which could then be an opportunity and, um, and a challenge kind of at the same time. So, because the other side of that, as you mentioned, from a challenge standpoint, there are a lot of people in the industry. So you have to try to separate yourself from a value standpoint. Um, but the opportunity then is that if you can separate yourself, right, you'll kind of, you can get yourself to a point where you're one of the best in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. And that gives you the opportunity to provide more value to, to your consumers. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I value is what I preach to my clients. I am not the only advertising agency collective that exists, yeah. even with a 10 mile radius of where I work, which is my living room. Yeah. Right. But the value I bring to our clients, the experience that they have, the authenticity, the truthfulness, the true genuine partnership, that's what separates us, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I really hang my hat on is regardless of the market, regardless of what's happening um, in this economy, we will continue to be successful because we build such a valuable relationship with our people. And just innately by the services that you're offering, you're not just a gym, you know, so yeah. already you've got a leg up on most of the competitors in your area because for them to offer what you're offering, they'd have to outsource a ton of things to bring them into their facilities. And it's still going to feel a little clunky because it's not integrated into their mission as a business. Exactly. And that's kind of where I would go is within our mission and our values. So any coach that comes in, any one that's going to be kind of touching and under the wall umbrella, it's, it is we're value driven. We want to be providing as much value as possible to our to our members and i think that that's what hopefully separates us from right we we have fitness studios 10 mile and five mile uh even closer right so it's just any it, it's a commoditized industry people can go sweat and move weights anywhere in a commercial gym or a fitness studio um it's going to be really about what you what you can deliver to the consumer oh i love that or at home like me exactly um you've been a, a teammate forever growing up playing sports, competitive sports, collegiate sports. You've also been in leadership positions on those athletic teams and at former work positions. How do you integrate leadership and teamwork as a co-founder and co-CEO? You've got a partner. How do you two work together to make sure that you're on the same page? How do you navigate challenges? And then also, how do you celebrate your wins? Yeah. Um, first, I think there is a true secret weapon in, in building businesses and that is kind of having a, a co-founder or a partner, um, obviously one that you can actually rely on and, and is a good kind of is a good partner and a good fit for you, mm -hmm. because one it's going to help the company grow because that person probably brings some perspectives and some skills that you just don't have as a solo uh, solopreneur, um, and then also you have someone to, to kind of use as a, a sounding board for when you're making decisions. And I know it's not very natural. And as a business oriented person or someone who wants to be in business, you kind of just want to go. And um, most businesses are built all off the strength of one person, but having what we've experienced is having that, that other person to be able to work with and even relieve a little bit of the stress of the business has, has been very helpful. Um, from our standpoint, what we do is we really lean into our strengths and then we communicate. 
So I have a finance, I have a financial background. Uh, my partner loves doing the, the, the media and marketing side. Um, uh, right. I like to focus on the sales and growth side. He likes to focus right then on our operational, really building great programs for our, for our clientele. And, and then we hold, we communicate on those things and we hold each other accountable to, to our, our high levels and, and that standard. So. Yeah, it, it is amazing. And I think it's also really important if you're going to have a partner to have very clearly defined roles, because mm -hmm. of course there's going to be things that you two overlap on. But it's really helpful to say, this is your responsibility. This is my responsibility. We work together to make sure that these things are successful. But to me, I can see it being, you've created such efficiency by saying, all right, you've got this, I've got this. We talk through everything, but you know, let's move forward to the really clear path. Yeah. And, and to be candid, uh, we're, we're a young business and that wasn't kind of what it was they want. We kind of had our strengths and just handled those things. But then we sat down as kind of a management and said, hey, we're going to grow here. We actually have to have these clear verticals and clear roles or we are going to continue to overlap and double work. And and someone's right. going to supposed to be doing something that things don't things just don't get done. So we kind of we've had those conversations. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you shared that, Tyler, yeah. because I feel like there are people that have co-founders or want to bring someone in or even hire a business coach that can start to contribute ideas to that. Mm -hmm. um, and they struggle with that because they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to cause waves. I don't want to upset you. And that's not what it's about. We're adults. This is business. It's not personal. Yeah. We both want to be successful. We need to work out a way to be efficient so that we're not duplicating efforts. Exactly. And, I, and to be honest, one of our first um, conversations were really based on one, just doing this. Do you want to put the work in together and, and kind of build this thing? But also how do we handle confrontation? Right. It's like we bring it to the table every day. Don't, don't go yeah. home with it. Right. Don't, like, yeah, you're going to talk to your spouse, you're going to talk to your girlfriend, you're going to talk to your wife about these things, but hopefully you come to me first, right? So we know how we can resolve whatever issues we're having or the business will just suffer from. It. Yeah. Or we have a deadlift competition and whoever lifts heavier wins. That's mostly what we do. And if TJ's listening yeah. to this, I always deadlift heavier. <laughs> TJ getting called out here. We'll have <laughs> TJ on next time, Tyler. Okay. And then yeah, we'll, we'll see what he says. <laughs> yeah. So eight wells doing well. Things are moving, your business is growing, you're learning a ton, and then all of a sudden, dripped, the idea is born. Yeah. Talk to me about that. What have you learned from 8Well? What's the impetus behind dripped? How are you seeing that integrating with your business, but also being a standalone business? Yeah. So the big thing kind of with there, that with building drip that we were able to, to implement and kind of learn right away was that business just takes time to, to catch mm -hmm. on with, with in a new market. For people to even know that you're doing business, I know that when we were building AWOL, there were just like months, and we still see it, right? Because we're we're just business owners, where you're like we're crushing it, and the next month you're like we're going out of business, right? Sure. So it's like just like not allowing yourself to have those ups and downs, and just focus on growing the business, and from an organic approach or from a paid approach, whatever you're going to do, just allow your process to take to kind of take place, and that's kind of what we we're being able to implement from the front of, from the front of drip, which has been almost more enjoyable. Then, and honestly, that probably part of that is also the fact that we have eight well, um, as a use as a source to integrate that business into and be able to market to our existing base as a, another value that they have. Uh, but mm -hmm. just the, the mentality that we're able to go into the business with is, is, uh, being able to give it leniency, right? Give it the ability to grow and give it the ability to just have people learn about it first, as opposed yeah. to just trying to kind of be able to, uh, to, to make a dollar on it, right? That I'm kind of in day one. Yeah. Well, and what's so great and so smart about Dript is that your <laughs> target audience is already there. Mm -hmm. in your and your email clients, customers, members, you know? And big evidence there was the fact that we could kind of easily integrate it one into our base. But as you'd mentioned, it's a standalone business. So um, we have people that aren't able members that are, uh, that are utilizing Drip, but we're able to at least utilize our current base to have that conversation for them to refer it out to their to their own friends and for them to get kind of, as I mentioned about value, just discounted pricing um, mm. on services within Drip because they're already in that AWOL, in the AWOL family. Yeah, I'll also happily take that discount code if you want to just email it over to me. <laughs> you're, so. you're, you were in the family from day one, so we'll send it. <laughs> Do you ship to New Hampshire, Tyler? Yeah, they, we're, gonna send, we're gonna send a nurse out there to you uh, whenever you need. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'll see her at five. That would be great. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about your personal experience, which you so lovingly left out of your bio. You, you'll never live it down. 
I think I know the answer to this question, but I, I really want you to share it with our, our viewers and listeners here. I'd love for you to share some personal experiences that sparked your interest and then ultimately led to you becoming fully engaged, invested, and owning a business in the fitness and wellness industry. Yeah. I feel like it's always, it's, it's tough to always kind of bring in the personal side of it because you always kind of just talk about the business and growing the business and it seems like what comes first. Um, but the, the impetus there, and I feel like it could be a very long story and it could be, um, it starts probably a long time ago. My, my father passed away when I was 11 years old and my mother was a single mother, um, raised us, couldn't buy herself for, for most of my, like most of my childhood and young, young adulthood as well. And she kind of took it on herself to really not allow me to kind of get taken by a uh, not great neighborhood at the time that we, that we were living in. Um, and then also to kind of improve her financial standing uh, and improve her career. So she's someone that went back to college while she had my, my older brother and sister. She's someone that uh, went and got her master's while I was probably in some mid time, time middle school, high school, right? So I had to leave, right? Her kids at home with dinner on the stove uh, and go and go to school, right? With people that were kind of taking their master's and she was kind of way, way past that and kind of a working person already. Um, so I really internalized this this drive to succeed and then also this responsibility um to to succeed as well and not just a responsibility to her but really this responsibility to what i just kind of took to uh this responsibility to a next generation in my family and not just i have two kids now but that responsibility wasn't necessarily just to them i wanted to be there but also just to younger people that are in my family so to my my younger cousins my my nephews and nieces I wanted to be this bridge to access to resources that I just didn't have. Um, mm -hmm. And I really kind of channeled this, this kind of drive and this motivation and this kind of mentality kind of into the only thing I knew at the time as a way out of this, this the circumstances that we were in. And that was really just in sports and, and mainly in football. So when I kind of got to, ninth grade there and i and again i didn't have a trainer I didn't have an access to trainers or anything like that it was more just like this is football is a key and so were your grades right you have to you have to get good grades and you have to play football or any other sports and that's going to be a way for you to do other things um that you haven't seen other people do so when i got into ninth grade there was an access to to weight room and you know you're a decent athlete so people are like hey get in the weight room now and once i got in i just kind of never left so it was just such a place for me to, to, to push myself, um, to feel myself, myself change. And honestly, it didn't it also didn't hurt that my body really responded to, to the weights in a kind of in a, in a, in a, a very positive way. So my body was almost like, yeah, this is, this is your, this is your key right here. And it became almost this reward cycle for me. So I put in some work there, I would see it and then I would see it on the field and then I would get notoriety from coaches. Uh, and I get an article and even I had an article in 10th grade. It was like, this guy has been working out and you could see it in, in his body. Right? And I was like, all right, well, this is, this is the key. So more than kind of any other 14, 13 year old was working out at that time. Like I was kind of, I put a lot of focus into the gym and that kind of, that's something that stayed with me from a, um, a physical and mental standpoint, just being able to push myself in, in the gym and the, the reward I felt about feeling good, looking good, playing good. Um, that always, that cycle just kind of stayed with me. Um, so getting into college and kind of coming out of that, I, again, as you mentioned, went into kind of a more financial consulting role, but that feel and that drive and that passion to be in the, in the gym just always stayed with me. So I got, um, certified as a personal trainer and I just found myself always creating workout programs for friends, for, for Lisa, who was my girlfriend at that time, but my now wife, and that just felt so good. And that just felt like something I wanted to do. Um, and then I had a very interesting crossover between what I was doing from a kind of a health financial consulting standpoint and then also from a, a training standpoint was the industry started seeing a lot of companies spend money on um, on wellness as a benefit for, for employees. So I was having a lot of conversations about that. And then I was having a lot of personal conversations about fitness and wellness. And then once those two really crossed, I kind of said like, all right, this this is real in the working world. And this is also real in my personal, my personal life. Let's it's probably time to make a jump. Mm -hmm. 
There's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> I think what's so impressive to me, Ty, is, you know, we, a lot of people, unfortunately, have hard um, perspective, right? Like, you go through stuff that's just hard, you know? Um, even if you didn't know that you were struggling, right? Like, it's just, you go through it because it's just life, and then you get to a point in life where you're like, you have a choice. You can either perpetuate a problem or you can rise above it. Mm -hmm. And as someone else who also lost her father at a, at a young age, I remember having this pivotal moment where I was either choosing to go back to college and play lacrosse and do this and be, continue my life um, or stay home and take, and take a semester off or take a few months. And being a part of a community, community in the form of my lacrosse team, I was a captain, having a coach that was like a parent having friends like you that were also on athletic teams, sports brought me back. You know, it gave me something really positive to focus on. And it wasn't just fitness related. It was community related. It was being goal oriented. It gave me something to really focus on and they, it healed me, yeah. you know, and I think it's such a powerful story if that for why you've started this business. And I think businesses that are started out of passion are, are never going to go out of business because Great. that passion, or die for you, you know, and other, there are so many people that relate to what you went through your life experience, even if it's slightly different. Um, like everyone has that everyone has a hardship of some sort, everyone's life is hard to them in some level, you know, and everyone's been hopefully gotten through that on some level through fitness community, partnership, friendships, focus and goal setting. And you've built a business about that. And I just think it's beautiful. No, I appreciate that. And I think that that's one of the, the biggest things um, is, is community. Just having a group of people that can, that you're accountable to, that are accountable to you, and you know that are going to be there to support you. So be it coming to a group fitness session and people just know you come to the five o'clock class or a group of networking people, a book, a book club, right? That group of people is just kind of going to give you that support to kind of keep pushing forward. Um, so. Yeah we try to find those in all places and that's what we try to build here kind of as well i think it's amazing for anyone watching if you want to learn more about tyler Eightwell, or drip they're all going to be tagged on linkedin um i strongly suggest you connect with tyler brown he's a wonderful wonderful human being um and please keep an eye out for Eightwell. they are on to some big big shit this year and i can't wait to see it all unfold for you ty i'm so proud of you thank you rich i appreciate you for everyone who's watching, thank you so much for tuning into The Mill. We will see you next time. Bye.